Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my Java Algorithms tutorial. Today, I'm going to introduce you to both algorithms as well as data structures. This tutorial is going to be heavy code-wise, and I'm going to present algorithms in numerous different ways. So let's get into it. So what exactly is an algorithm? It's just a series of steps you take to manipulate data. That's it. It's not that complicated. So what are data structures? They're just a way that data is arranged in memory. And today, we're going to focus on the main data structure operation or algorithms that you're going to need to understand completely being inserting values deleting values and searching for values and we are going to focus on arrays and I know everybody says they understand arrays but I'm going to get into a question I get all of the time about multi-dimensional arrays but while I'm here I might as well cover the basics whenever we're going to create an array of course we're going to define how many boxes we want and this is an array over here and of course the very first index index is 0, 1, and 2, and so forth, and so on. So by putting this line right here, we are basically saying we want three boxes. Down here, we actually initialize the array and put 12, 16, and 24, just like you see right there. The third value in this situation would come from the second index, and of course, that would be 24. And if we would ever call for array name with the index 1, it would return 16. Basic stuff out of the way. So what is going on in this situation? This is initializing a large multi-dimensional array, and I get questions on this stuff all of the time. Now, finally, I'm going to answer it. Basically, whenever you see an initialization of an array like this, what the boxes represent, the first one being how many down? Well, you can see right here, one, two, and three. So if we were want to get a hold of this value of 0, 2, 0, we would put 2 inside of there for the index, 0, 1, and 2. Then the second box is going to represent how many across in our multidimensional array, being 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 total boxes. Now is whenever things get complicated, whenever we get to the third box, which is going to be how many of these groupings are we going to need. Now since it is set at 1, things aren't that complicated as you can see. This is in essence one page, one big box with a bunch of boxes inside of it. But what happens whenever we increase this value from 1? In essence, we have just created two pages, exactly as you see here on the screen. And the only difference for the second page is we are going to increment the third value, just as you can see right there, for every single one of the indexes on that second page. So now I'd like to jump over and look at a graphical program to show you all the different things we're going to cover in this tutorial. And I basically threw together this little program here. You can download it. It's on a link underneath the video if you want to play around with arrays inside of this or see how a multi-view controller sort of setup would work, which I've also been getting a lot of questions on. So what we're going to cover is how to delete indexes. So let's say we want to delete index 6 in this situation. Just type in 6 and then delete, and you're going to see this 10 move up. And there it did, just like that. We're also going to see how to insert values, and you also may have noticed that the index value altogether or that row deleted, we're going to cover that as well. We could also insert a value, let's say 23 insert and you're going to see there it is down there. We're also going to cover multiple different ways to find values. So let's say we wanted to find all of the 16s inside of this. No problem, just put 16 inside of there for value. And here we're going to do a linear search and click on find and you can see that 16 shows up in index 1, 3, and 4. And in fact, 1, 3, and 4 show up right like that. We're also going to cover how to sort both using ascending sort just like that as well as descending sort just like that and we're going to do a whole bunch of other different things in this tutorial so let's just jump right into the code Okay, so I basically have a class here called Array Structures, and all this code is available in the link underneath the video. So, and I'm going to create a private integer array, and I'm going to call it the array. And if I want to define that it's going to contain 50 boxes, 
not 50 values. Well, that's exactly how I'm going to do that. Then I'm also going to be storing the array size because I don't want to be printing out the default values whenever I'm cycling through these arrays. I'm just going to want to print out the parts of the arrays that have values. So that's going to be something that's important for us to work with. And let's say that I want to come in here and create a random number of values inside of my array. Well, of course, I'm just going to go integer. I create a for loop loop for this guy and here array size is set for 10 so I'm only going to be generating 10 of those and then to add them to my array of course I'm going to go the array and then put an I inside of here I know this is all basic stuff we're going to get into the more complicated things here in a second just want to cover everything and we'll just go random and let's say that I want numbers between 10 and 19 10 and add 10 to the end of that and there we are. Now we have an array full of random different values. Now, if I want to print these out on my screen in a way that makes it look like an array with little brackets around it, I'm just going to go print array and system out print line and one two three four five six seven eight nine ten I think that's ten and then if I want to print out all of my different values I haven't stored inside of it well I'm just gonna go from zero less than array size and then increment I as we go and then let's print little brackets here so I'm just gonna go like this I am gonna print out the index and then if I also want to print out the array value I'm gonna go the array I throw another line inside of there and I should put another space there and then print this line here as well now what I'm gonna be able to do is come down here and actually create this guy so what I call this the array so I'm gonna have to go array structures new array is equal to new array structures and then I can go new array and generate my random array for myself and then if I want to print my array I'm gonna use that guy right there zoom in here find print array and click on on it and then execute it. Well, that looks terrible, so let's come up here. Instead of print line, let's take that out and just leave that as print. I'll save execute, and there you can see, much better. So we got our index, and we got all of our values, and it looks just like an array would look. So let's get into the actual algorithms of this guy, things we're going to be doing all the time. How exactly are we going to get a value by our index? Well, this is a simple one. Public int, get value, at, index and I'll get past an index and then let's say that I want to verify that the index is less than my array size no problem return the array and the index value and otherwise let's just say return zero just to do anything basic basic stuff and of course new array get value at index and let's say we want three and then let's throw a system out print line around this guy I'll save execute and you can see here index 3 18 and there is 18 I know still simple let's get more complicated now let's say we want to find out if an array contains a value and what we're going to do with this guy is return a boolean does array contain this value little long name I know search value boolean value in array is equal to false and then if we're going to search through them of course we're going to use our for loops again i array size and then we're just simply going to bounce from array to array and say does the array value in that box equal the search value and if it does mark this as true and then at the end we're going to just return it do pretty much the same thing we had before new array does array contain this value and then inside of it we'll put 18 this is going to be a surprise for us all execute and false came up and we don't see 18 there and that is a good thing so let's ratchet it up get a little bit more complicated how are we going to go about deleting an index and then moving all the other values up a little bit more complicated than before and let's look at brief exactly what we're going to try to do here okay so we're going to have like we have here we have three boxes with values inside of them if we decide we want to delete the zero index what we're going to do next is we're going to copy the value of the first index just like we did right there and then we're going to move down inside of our array copy the next lower value being 10 up here over the original 18 and then after we get to the end of the array we're going to delete the last value in the array so how are we going to do that code wise let's go public 
void delete index and of course we're going to have to get an index to delete from and we're going to do a little check here to make sure that our index is lower than our array size and then like i said before we're going to overwrite the value for the supplied index and then keep overwriting every index that follows until we get to the last index in our array so here's our trusty for loop again this time we're going to start at the index that they provided right like that and we're going to go up to array size minus one because we have one less actual value than our array size because of the zero index of course and then we're just going to simply say the array i is going to be equal to the array i plus one and that is going to move up those values and we're going to continue doing it until we get to the at the very end of the array and then after that since we no longer have as many spaces in our array we're going to decrement the array size so let's take a look at that new array delete index just like we saw before and let's say we want to delete index four and then let's say that we want to print out our array just like we did before file save and execute and there we can see index four is what we wanted to delete the value there was 18 and the values above it were 19 and 11 and if we come down here you can see it's gone there's 19 and 11 we knocked out that original value in the fourth index and now you can see we have one less space inside of our array so let's continue how are we going to insert values well we're going to insert them at the end of our array so we'll just go in value again i'm going to do the same thing i'm just going to copy this and then i'm going to go array size to make sure that we don't try to throw in a value if we no longer have space inside of our array let's so make sure that we keep that below 50 and then we're just going to go the array array size and insert the value and then we just got to increment the array size and again the reason why array size works there and not array size plus one is because of the zero index is going to be one less than what we actually have and then of course we can insert a value new array insert value and let's say that we want to put 55 inside of there so it stands out and then we can print our array and execute and there you can see 55 is inside of there and the other reason why that's nine is because we previously deleted it well now let's do something a little bit more complicated being a linear search with a linear search what we're going to do is look at every single indexed value in the entire array and how this would work would be if you wanted to find both 11s inside of this because linear search works better whenever you want to find all matches instead of just one if you only want to find one match if there's no duplicates in your array then a binary search is going to work better you're going to see that in a second so how are we going to do our linear search just go public string linear search for value and it's going to get a value that we're going to search for inside of our array boolean value in array which is going to be like a question now we're going to start off with it being false and then let's say indexes with value because we're going to get all our matches not just the first one we find like we're going to do with the binary search system out print and then we're going to say something like the value was found in the following indexes or whatever i'm just going to leave it like that and the linear search is very straightforward what are we going to do we're going to go and create our for loop int i zero index i array size and then real basic we're going to go the array i does it match our value and if it does we're going to say value in array is equal to true system out print line actually print and then i'm just going to put i inside of there and put a space and then let's say that i want to store this to return it or something like that because i do have this set up as a string return indexes with value i'm just going to put i plus spaces and then after our for loop as finished i can go if value in array because remember that's a boolean and we can go indexes with value I'm just going to copy this in that situation i'm going to make that equal to none and we could actually also print that out here onto the screen indexes with value and then let's say we want to just print a space at the end of that and also at the same time print out or return indexes with value if we wanted to do that i don't know as you guys know i like to do these things out of my head so now let's see what it looks like when we execute a linear search for values new array and then we're going to go and do linear search for value 
and I'm just going to put 17 inside of there and execute it and see what happens. And you can see here the value was found in the following indexes 5, 7, and 8. And there's 8, 7, and 5. So that's how a linear search works. Well, I covered a ton of different things in this tutorial. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use bubble sort to both sort in ascending and descending order and binary search, different ways to swap values, and a whole bunch of other things. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.